Good to see everybody. Uh, um, look forward to the challenge of playing the 49ers, heck of a football team. Uh, these teams, that, the last two teams standing here, uh, we're, we're honored to be one of them. So with that, time's yours here. Hey, Coach, over to your right. Yep. You've been around pro football for so long. The, the business of the game just continues to grow, the hoopla around it. What, what have you made and what would you think back from your early days of coaching of what the NFL was then and the behemoth that it's become now? Yeah, um, it's, it's great uh, for, for the league, for the players, coaches, uh, for you guys. Everybody profits from it um, from a monetary standpoint. It's fun to watch the growth of the game the different changes that have taken place there. Um, grateful for the foundation that the guys before us laid for us. And, um, you know, it's, but it, it's, it's different. I mean, it's definitely different. I, when, I, when I got into it, there weren't cell phones. And uh, now look at us, right? So uh, the technology, uh, not only with you folks, but also uh, within the game, um, has been increased and it allows you to be even more detailed as a coach, which presents you and the fans uh, better offenses and defense, a little bit uh, more out of the box, sophisticated type offenses and defenses. So um, it's unlimited that way. And it'll continue, it's going to keep growing. Uh, the longer, longer we're in this, it's become uh, uh, not just a game uh, in America, but a game throughout the world now. So. Uh, tribute to Roger Goodell and all his efforts uh, that he's put forward to, to make this a progressive, uh, this game progressive and, and international. Uh, Coach Reed over here to your left, uh, Evan Walker with WXCI. Uh, Coach, the 49ers are one of the few teams to regularly employ a fullback in their offense. You've been around this game for a long time. Why do you think we've seen a decline in teams regularly employing fullbacks? And what are some of the unique challenges that presents? Yeah, so this is actually the first year that we haven't, uh, that uh, since I've coached, that I haven't had a fullback. Um, and I just had a tight end that could kind of fill that role. And that's what, that's what um, people are doing now. So uh, things are so spread out that people have gone away from uh, the traditional fullback, although they do a great job with it. And it's, and they're the number one offense. So they're doing something doing something uh, right with him, he, and he's a heck of a player. But what you see with him is he can play uh, the tight end position, he can play wide receiver position, he, they move him all over the place. And his flexibility within the offense uh, makes it um, you know, valuable position for them. Hello, Coach, good morning. Federico Olvera, Rame Bola from Radio 13, Mexico City. Yes. Coach, uh, what is, what's your strategy to to, um, to arrive good, in a good shape in January in the playoffs, what are those things you, you do and you say to your players to execute well on the game and most of it in the Super Bowls? Yeah, so there, there's a lot of um, uh, hoopla that goes on with the game and uh, everybody patting you on the back and all of that's great, um, but you've still got to practice. So when we come out here, we, we practice and we go over to the field every day, make sure we get our work done, um, take care of your diet, the players do that, and rest um, becomes important. So you try to keep them in a routine the best way you possibly can uh, with the different events that they have, uh, they're obligated to. Andy, a couple things. Uh, Kadarius Tony, what are his chances of playing on Sunday? Yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes. He's been practicing, and, um, and we'll just see whether he's up or, or not. Yep. And what about Jarek McKinnon as well? Uh, Jarek is not practicing. Uh, I tell you, it's slim uh, for him to be out there. Coach Reed, last year I got to interview you, and I asked you if you considered your Kansas City Chiefs in a dynasty. You told me that it was not in you to define them like that. Given the circumstances and seeing you back here again, I have to ask, has your answer changed? Are you the new dynasty? Yeah, so I, I think the best answer I can give you is when you're in the mix of things like we are, you don't really look at um, that. 
you're so focused in on the next, the next game. And I think if you make that your focus, uh, you're probably going to have a problem and, and get knocked off uh, whatever pedestal people think you're on. And so um, this game, there's too much parity in this game to, to take your energy and put it in that direction. So we're focusing on this game here um, against a great football team, and it it's going to take all our energy to do well against them. Yeah. Sorry. Hi, Andy. Hey. Um, what, do you, what would you like to see from Joe Tooney to make him possible to play Sunday? And um, as a veteran coach, how hard is it to know a guy's an all-pro and is trying to be out there, but you have to maybe make the difficult decision to not play him in the biggest game? The yeah, Nate, it's just it's strength. Um, and making sure that he's in a position that he doesn't get hurt, uh, worse than what he's got. And, so that's, uh, that's what we look at. Do you, do you anticipate he's going to try to practice this week? Uh, we'll see. I, I mean, I think it's a long shot, yeah. Uh, Coach Reed, uh, 11 Sports, The Zone, the American football community in Belgium. You have uh, coached in a lot of Super Bowls. You won Super Bowls. You lost Super Bowls. Which of the Super Bowls you won gave you the most satisfaction? And which of the Super Bowls you lost stuck with you the longest? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question because uh, the ones you lose stick with you um, and the ones you win stick with you, so they're in, in a good way. But um, I tell you always the first one you, that you win is, is something special. Um, not that the other one wasn't, but uh, and then the losses, they, you know, you try to learn from them the best you can. And I can remember about every play from each one of those, so yeah. Coach Reed, uh, Jake Bodine with God Behind Bars. Yep. I, I, as a father of five myself, and you being a father of five, how do you balance football and family? Yeah, so I, I'd probably add faith in there too, because that helps uh, along that trail, um, obviously. So um, I think it's important that you spend time with your family. I've, I've got 12 grandkids and one on the way, and so it's important that we, we divide our time up. I'm blessed to have a great wife that uh, likes to travel and go see all the grandkids, and she has a little bit more freedom to do that. But um, if I'm not doing that, then I'm if I'm not uh, doing football or family. I mean, I'm not doing anything. I'm not I'm not a golfer. I'm not a, I don't go fishing and all that stuff. So I'm uh, it's either family or or football or or church. So, yeah. Coach, uh, year over year, you have two new tackles. Just. As you look back at the year, how have you seen them develop and confidence level of them slowing down Bosa and company? Yeah, so we had the, those inside three that were um, kind of the nucleus of it. And, and then we were able to welcome in two new tackles. Uh, and things start off relatively slow just because of the expectation level coming into a team that had been winning. Um, but they've worked their tail off, and they also came from winning programs. So they worked their tail off to fit into – uh, the scheme and have done a nice job with that. So I've been happy with their progress. Hi, Andy. <clears throat> Hi, Andy. We talk a lot about the various player matchups, but I wanted to ask you how about the coaching matchup? Like yourself, Kyle's considered one of the tops in the profession. What's it like going up against him? Yeah, um, it, it's an honor to be able to go against him. I, I think he is um, one of the top coaches in the National Football League, obviously. Um, this isn't just a one-year thing for him. He's been doing this now for a while. So um, I have a ton of respect for him. He, he is a great offensive mind, but <clears throat> he's also very sharp on the, from a defensive standpoint on special teams, which makes him a great head football coach. And a um, ton of respect for him. Look forward to the challenge of being able to do that uh, on Sunday. Andy, Ryan Dunleavy from the New York Post. You only have two of your defensive starters from the last time these two teams played in the Super Bowl. You guys have remade your defense. It's pretty easy to, for teams to stick with winning guys. What prompted you guys to make over the defense so much in these last four or five years, and how have you been able to do that while still winning at the elite level? Yeah, um... I would tell you age was some of the factor in, in this world of the NFL and free agency. Things change. Uh, we, Brett Veach has done a nice job of bringing an influx of young guys 
into the program. Those young guys, a bunch of them were in that secondary, um, and they've gotten better here with time. So we took some bumps and bruises early last year, but they've gotten better. Uh, they got better towards the end of last year, and then they just picked up on it and have done a nice job uh, working into this year. But I, I would tell you, Brett, the job that Brett does between free agency and the draft um, is second to none. I mean, he does a great job with all that. <coughs> Coach, oh, here. Good. Gotcha. Uh, can you talk about uh, just how positive Clyde's attitude has been? He, he spoke earlier on this season about, you know, the surprise of not being able to play in last year's game. We can talk about his, his uh, attitude this year. Yeah, Clyde's been great. He, he brings a lot of energy to that, not only that group, but to the team. Um, and in return, he's had a, a tremendous year this year. So, um, and he and Pacheco have a good relationship, um, as all the running backs do, but he, those two have a special relationship. And, uh, and as coaches, we don't, we don't care who's in or who's out. They, they interchange with each other and both have, uh, they're both strong on the pass game and the run game, so. Coach, right here. Yep. Gotcha. Uh, question from Germany. Yes. Um, as you said before, um, times have changed a lot. Uh, the internet, mobile phones. Um, what do you say about the conspiracies that uh, have popped up concerning Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift, like some kind of Republican conspiracies that you guys made it into the Super Bowl to actually secretly reelect or help reelect President Biden? Mm. <laughs> that's that's way out of my league. Very similar to me speaking German. <laughs> I, but I, listen, we appreciate, uh, I appreciate the question. She's, she's been great. Um, and um, we had a nice visit with President Biden. That's about as far as I can go last year. <laughs> yeah, with that. Andy, over here. Nope, I'm lost all the way over. Gotcha, Jeff. Um, this game features two of the better offensive play callers in the NFL. But to do that, during the course of a game, does it have to take away or does it from game management? Um, I guess it, 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 it can. I, 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 we haven't had problems with that. Um, we have good communication. We all have headsets on so we can, uh, and we have an opportunity to see things. So I, I think we're okay there. I trust um, you know, Matt Nagy with doing things if I have to watch uh, the game, he's taking care of business, doing doing his thing. I'm sure Kyle would probably tell you the same thing. So we're there, and I, I think it works out okay. Yeah. Hey, Andy, over here. Okay. Um, there we go. So the answer, you know, if you can't say the third and 15 play, when you think back to the Super Bowl win over the 49ers, is there a moment or a, another play from that game that just kind of will pop to mind? Um, I tell you, that was probably a big one right there. Um, uh, there were several plays within there to uh, where we were able to come back in the game. Um, they got after us pretty good at the first half and into that third quarter. But um, I, I would tell you that uh, that would probably be the biggest play that, that stands out, though. Yeah. <clears throat> Coach, right here, uh, Gilberto Bregón, CBS Las Vegas. Okay. With the win on Sunday, you get the chance to join a short list, Bill Belichick, Bill Walsh, to, of coaches to uh, win more than three Super Bowls. Have you thought about that? I haven't, no. But I appreciate you asking. <laughs> and I, I, that's not where I go with all that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you use that as motivation? or? Uh, no, I, listen, I, I'm in, uh, we're trying to teach uh, about the 49ers. Um, and you take yourself out of it. You take all that stuff out. This is a team sport, so you focus right in on, on, on that group. I will tell you, though, we've enjoyed uh, Las Vegas and the hospitality uh, from your people in the city here. Yeah. Right here. Andy, EJ Smith with the Philadelphia Inquirer. When you think of that two and four stretch you guys went through in the regular season, particularly the struggles Marquez had in some of those games, I guess what does it take from a team to overcome that and a player to overcome something like that? Yeah. Um, MVS has done a, a real nice job uh, with with that. He had a couple big drops early in the season. Um, he just kept working, and he's mentally tough. He's smart. 
um, he understands the offense. So uh, he just pounded through it, and and it worked out. And the quarterback maintained confidence in him, and has kept using him throughout. So, yeah. Last question. All in. Uh, we've executed at a higher level since then. Yeah, I think just just simplifying, um, playing fast, letting guys go out there and just execute at their strengths um, was something that we, we always try to do, but I think we just really, really focused on that and letting guys play fast, not think, um, and that's uh, helped us out a ton um, as this year's went on. Patrick, I wanted to ask you about your side hustle, packing into commercials. Mm -hmm. um, how was your comfort level to change after the year's Definitely a lot, lot more comfortable with it. You, you understand the process of it, how the cameras have to be set, everything like that, and... Uh, I'm not going to say I'm like top tier yet, but uh, I've done better. I think as the more years have gotten those commercials in, um, and so I'll continue to do them, um, especially with State Farm and stuff like that. And uh, I'll try to keep head and shoulders as long as they let me keep it if I cut my hair. So we'll see if we can keep going. Yeah, I mean, uh, Travis is built for those moments, man. Uh, he does a great job. I mean, obviously he hosted SNL, um, and then um, being able to shoot the commercials. It's always fun when you get a guy that you can – you can kind of freelance or kind of freestyle with a little bit and kind of do your own thing and just show your real personality. And uh, definitely good to have uh, him and Coach Reed and all those guys. Yeah, it's a fine line. I mean, you want to you want to always stand behind what you believe in and what your beliefs are, um, and hopefully those are the right values and the right the right way. Um, but you you want to also have your personal life and keep things to yourself. You just find that right right spot to use your platform in the right way that you believe can help not only yourself but the the world and uh, that we live in. Um, just kind of football in general. I mean, sometimes you just don't – you kind of get in the funk and you're not let, uh, kind of able to get out of it. Um, I thought in the second half in the AFC Championship game, obviously we were playing a really good defense, uh, all-time defense, and um, they were executing at a high enough level. We just didn't execute. If you look at the film, a uh, few mistakes here and there by kind of everybody, and that stuff that will uh, – when you're playing a defense like that, will stall out drives, and uh, we're playing a defense like that this, this week as well. And so we just have to execute at a higher level. Um, in the second half of football games, and uh, I believe when we're executing, we can we can score the football. Um, he's done a great job, man. I mean, it's it, it's hard in this offense to learn um, everything that Coach Reed wants you to do, all the different kind of routes, say how we run them versus man versus zone, all that different type of stuff. And he's done a good job of just learning from his mistakes and, and, and not making the same mistake twice and getting better and better. And that's why his role has gotten bigger and bigger as the seasons went on. Uh, real quick, Pat, I've been asking a lot of guys on the Chiefs, you get a tattoo on your face anywhere on their body for a guaranteed Super Bowl win. Some guys said yes, some said no. Shouldn't the answer be 100% yes? 100% yes. I'm doing whatever it takes for the Super Bowl win for sure. Right? Yeah, 100%. What about the guys that say, like, they shouldn't get it? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's humbling because I never thought I would be in this many Super Bowl games, honestly. I mean, you, you, you strive to, to be great, um, but you understand how hard it is to even be in this game. And for us to be in uh, my fourth one and, and my six years of starting, um, it truly is remarkable, and I, I don't take it for granted because you never know if you're going to be able to be back in this game. Yeah, I think we just, you got to first off take care of the football. Um, they're they're very opportunistic. They 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 get turnovers. They fly over to the football. They play hard, um, and then we have to match their intensity. I mean, they're a really good team. Um, offense, defense, special teams, they, they do it all, and so we have to match that intensity through and through in order to win the football game. Oh yeah, definitely heard about Bobby Witt's contract, man. I'm glad he's back. I'm glad he's gonna be in Kansas City um, for the long run, man. Just knowing the guy and how hard he works, um, it's gonna do, do tremendous things for that organization. Um, because when you have a leader like that, that that's young and really is inspired to make this team great, that's what you want in, uh, in, in your league. 
yeah, we, 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 we talk to each other a, a little bit here and there, I t just through text and stuff like that. Obviously, I see him sometimes in Dallas. Um, but luckily for, for me, we're in the Super Bowl, so I won't probably see him this offseason. He'll probably be already headed back um, before, by the time I get there. But um, it, it's, he's a, the right type of guy that you want leading an organization. I think everybody knows that, that, that knows him. Um, and he wants to do it uh, in Kansas City, which I always think is special because uh, uh, Kansas City is a special place, and they get behind their teams, and uh, you want the Royals to be in that, that World Series convo again. It, was, uh, it broke everybody's heart in Chiefs Kingdom when Norma passed, and uh, we were fortunate enough to go and get the Lamar Hunt Trophy for her. Uh, and it, it, for this being the first Super Bowl she hasn't been to, um, to bring this one home for the Hunt family would mean the world. And, um, you know, such a powerful woman in sports and uh, definitely uh, one to remember for sure. I would say just find a love for the game, man. Find a love for the the, the grind and, and and getting better and uh, finding love in the in accepting the challenges yeah, that come with that. Um, I think this year, more than any year, I think we've been challenged uh, on uh, on putting points up on the board, and um, you know that never the the mentality in the building never changed, and that's where you see the growth and uh, the incline of just keep getting better and better. Is that you know. Um, no matter what the challenge is in front of us, we're, we're willing to accept that challenge and attack it head on. And um, I feel like when you just have a love for the game and you have, you have that love and that, that want to gain knowledge for it, everything just kind of, you know, it takes off from there. Just... I just love this team, man. I love uh, I love coming into work every single day with these guys, uh, men and women, and it's just been an amazing. Uh, it's been an amazing journey up to this point. Um, and when you when you go through some ups and downs with people, you know, uh, and you make it through the other side, it's it's a beautiful thing, man. And and, and you just want it that much more for the person next to you, knowing how much uh, how much work they put in. And uh, it's just um, you know this this year's has been it's it's its own journey and had its own challenges, but I think it's really molded us into one of the best football teams I've ever been on. Yeah. Everybody's, everybody's, you know, subject to their own opinion on everything, but I, um, I feel like it's only given me energy, man. I'm, uh, I'm very fortunate to be in the position I am in life and to have the amazing things going for me. Um, and you know what? I, uh, I'd be silly to find any negativity in what's going on in my life. Ain't no jitters for me, baby. I'm excited for this one, man. I'm excited for the challenge. I know it's going to be our biggest challenge yet, and uh, there's no doubt seeping, seep, seeping in. Um, we got a great football team, uh, and we're going up against a great football team. It's going to be one for the ages. I'm just excited for it, man. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm fired up, man. <laughs> I'm ready to get this show on the road, put these pads on, and get this game rocking, man. Man, the 127 and West Nixon crew is uh, that's a special crew right there. Uh, for those of you who don't know, it's uh, the house that we li that we lived in in uh, the University of Cincinnati. Um, yeah, those guys are special to me, man. But I'll tell you what, man, this group uh, right here, this group that we got right now is um, is a special of a team that I've ever been on, man. And it's just uh, it's been a blast getting to, uh, get to know and getting to grow with these guys. Oh yeah, Wolfie's my. Father. That's listen. Wolfie would be my brother forever, man. Derek Wolf is my guy, man. How can you not cheer for that, man? And he's the way he's done it. You know the naysayers, how he's been able to, to to fight through. Everybody's saying who, what type of quarterback he is. Um, you can't help but the root for the guy. Um, I'm going to bite my teeth during the game, but I mean, just to who he is, I had him on the New Heights podcast of mine with my brother, and he was just a humble, good guy, and I mean, you could just tell that he's in it for the right reasons, so it's, uh, you could definitely cheer for him, but 
Um, I'll be rooting against them on Sunday. Um, I don't know if it inspires me, but it, it definitely gives me a lot of respect for the young man. Um, I think uh, everybody finds inspiration in their own light, but uh, seeing him, you know, go through what he had to go through and be where he is, you know, you can appreciate that and respect the hell out of him. And like I said, you can cheer for him and want, want, want you know, him to keep having that success, just maybe not this Sunday. I'd like to say I'm a product of my environment, man. I, uh, I, got a, I got an unbelievable head coach. I got a great coaching staff that puts me in the best positions possible. And then I got a great team and a great quarterback that, uh, that play their tails off and work their tails off every single week to, to try and get you know, everybody to have the success that we've had this year. And uh, that being said, man, if you're not getting excited for the playoffs, man, I don't, there's something wrong with you, man. You're, you're not human. You know, so just getting for getting excited for those big moments uh, and just uh, being accountable for the guys. That's the biggest thing. Man, I'm a I'm a big no rules kind of guy. So once the play breaks down, there's no rules. I could just kind of run wherever I want to. Uh, Pat's the best at finding guys no matter where they're at on the field at any point in the game or any point in the play. So. Uh, having the understanding that the play's never over and anything can happen, and then on top of that, maybe no rules. Um, you know, last year was a it was a special, special year for us. And um, you know, obviously, if you've seen my brother's documentary, Kelsey, you'll you'll see a lot why. And uh, it's because of how tight and how close we were. And I'd always wanted to be at the mountaintop with my brother. And um, it's, uh, it was always in, when I visualized it, it was always playing with him in the Super Bowl, but playing against him, meeting him there was, uh, was one of the most special moments of my life. And I don't, I don't know if any moment will ever compare to being on, on top of the world with uh, going against my brother like that. You know, I wouldn't say they use him in a, in a unique way. You know, he's a, he's a huge part of their offense because of all the different stuff he's able to do. They run the ball behind him a lot. And, you, you know, there's different things they do to, to, to play to his strengths, if you will. You know, so they, they do a lot of stuff where they run behind him or they, they've used him in the past in some formations, pulling and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, he, we, we have a, a, a whole lot of respect for him. Is there any specific way that they do this? Like, is it when you're in the film room, um, are there concepts or? Gotcha. Gotcha. Come again? A hero? Uh, I don't know. My, uh, my parents. Uh, my favorite mem favorite Vegas memories so far had had been uh, getting drafted. I was drafted here, and you know, being able to be a part of all that stuff and enter this great organization. You know, have won a couple games here already, so that's been awesome, and, and hopeful to win another one uh, this Sunday. My emotion? Yeah. Your I don't know if any of these are just. Uh, I don't know if any of these are fit. Yeah, I don't know if any of these really fit. You know, it's a, it's it's a lot of fun being here. Uh, I don't know. This I, I'm just I'm just blessed to be here, so I use this. You know, just uh, it's a blessing to be a part of a, a situation like this and to be able to go to two Super Bowls back to back. So that's why I'd say that. The, the toughest part? I mean, I, you know, for, for me, it's always being challenged to, to be great every single day, you know, pushing yourself to, to, to be better every single day. I don't know if that's a challenging part, but that, that's, I wouldn't have it any other way. Absolutely. You know, this season is uh, getting through a lot of adversity, you know, being able to overcome that and, and still hopefully finish off the season the right way.
we don't really uh, focus on any of that that talk or anything like that. But for us, it's just always constantly striving to get better. Uh, you know, we're challenged by our, our, our coach, Coach Spags, to, uh, to constantly get better and to achieve the potential of our defense. So that's what we, we try to do every single day. I don't necessarily say we, that we talk about it. I mean, it's it's always you know when you start the season, the goal is to win the Super Bowl every single year, whether you've won it the week, the the, the year before, or you haven't ever won it. Uh, so, you know, for us to just get to the Super Bowl and win it, that's that's the starting goal for every season. Absolutely. I think with Spags, it, it all starts about how much he cares about the, the guys. Man, he, we could see that he truly cares about us. He loves us. He's like a father figure, if you will. And uh, when th it starts with that, you know, the, he, he's, uh, he's a man that instills faith in our defense, you know, just trusting in one another, and uh, everything goes from there. But, you know, we love Spags. We love playing for Spags, like his game plan, you know, and, and what they, they able, the stuff he's able to dial up speaks for itself. But, uh, you know, this, he's just a great human being. I'd, I'd have to say that before anything else. Yeah, there's a there's a good amount of that. You know, we talked. We had a lot of first year starters last year uh, that try to take that next step this year, and hopefully, I think we we show that we did that. Um, and, you know, we just challenge each other to get better every single day. You know, I think this can be a group of guys with a core group of however many there are that they can really do some special things in the future. But right now, we're just focused on this game. Do you realize how unique that is? Because obviously, at a bit of it is free agency. Teams don't really stay together for a long time. Yeah. Absolutely, I think we have the chance to do something really special, but I think we have a, a chance to do something really special again this week, too. So just focus on that. George, I was talking to Ryan yesterday about how last year was a great Super Bowl as well, but it is to guys like Jamie and Josh from the next year. Now, do you feel a little bit more at ease this year compared to last year, or is it really just the same process? I wouldn't, I wouldn't really say at ease. You know, the tensions are high, the stakes are high. You know, you're in a Super Bowl, you know. Uh, but you're, you're familiar, and having that experience, I think, just um, makes you just more familiar and, and not, not as tense maybe going into the game. What kind of teacher is Spags? Uh, hmm. I don't know. That's a great question. You know, Spags always keeps you on your toes because he'll, like, be presenting a certain topic or something like that, and he might just call in a random person to, to explain something. So he, he challenges everybody, and, and everybody's going to know. He's, he's a great teacher because he explains everything really, really well. Everybody takes notes, and there's, specifically, there's a specific way we conduct our business in the, uh, in the defensive unit room. So, uh, you know, he, he's great. You mentioned how much he cares about the players. Yeah. You could just tell by his words, by his emotions, by his actions, you know, by the trust he has in our pl in the players and in the coaches. But you know, he's the leader, so he, you know, leaders lead by example. So he he definitely does a great job of that. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of different instances within the year that if he, if he really feels a certain way, he'll harp on it all the time during the week. Uh, you know, like, uh, I don't know, like about Lamar, really just being able to contain him and not giving him very many running lanes. We, that was a focal point, so he just kept harping on that during the week of practice. At Iowa? I, I didn't play at Iowa. Yeah, Purdue. Okay, I was about to say, I'm not an Iowa guy, but... Uh, um, you know, I definitely have watched Nick and have a lot of respect for his game. You know, it's more during the off season when you're trying to improve your craft, uh, or like during the season when you're trying to study a common opponent. So I've watched him. I have a lot of respect for his game, and uh, he's a great player, a great, great guy to watch. It's, uh, it's a blessing to be able to play for a guy like him. Yeah, you know, we practice situations like that. Uh, you know, the, the coaches do a great job of preparing us for anything. So, uh, you know, the team's done a great job understanding situations, and the coaches done a great job relaying those situations for us. Best hockey player? 
Uh, probably Travis over there. I think he's I think he's pretty good at ice skating and a uh, physical big guy, athletic. So I don't know if he's played hockey before. I think he did, but you know, I would I'd probably say Travis. Yeah, you know, I've, we've we've gotten a great relationship over the past three years, and uh, just being able to work with Pat's a blessing. You know, uh, obviously, I, you know, he's probably the best quarterback in the league right now, uh, the best in a while too. So it's a it's a blessing just to get to work with him, and uh, we've grown a good relationship over the past three years. Uh, can't think of anything specific right now. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, he's done a great job for us, and you know, you, I, you know, we knew he'd be able to just because of the way he works day in and day out. You know, wanted to be the best version of himself he can be, and uh, anytime his number's been called for us since I've been here, I mean, he's done a great job, and uh, you know, he obviously has a ton of experience playing in bigger games, things like that throughout his career too. So uh, it's just been, it's been awesome to have him. Uh, he's a huge piece in our room. Yeah, I mean, it, it can definitely be difficult for people. Um, but the way he's attacked the season, the way he's, you know, set back and me and him have studied, you know, filmed together, you know, after hours in the, in the, in the facility, you know, I knew he'd be uh, prepared. Yeah, you know, I mean, Javon, he's one of the best D tackles in the league for sure. So uh, any anytime you're playing against him, you know, you have to be on your best. And uh, if you're not, it's going to be a long day. So, uh, you know, it's it's always fun playing against him. I played him twice now. This will be the third time. And, uh, you know, you know, it's going to be a tough day's work ahead whenever you're playing him. Yeah, new game, new season. You know, every every week's going to be different. So uh, for us, it's just coming in with the same mentality every single week. Yeah, I'm wondering if you're a piece of advice or a coaching moment that's really impacted you on the Yeah, I mean, uh, probably the best piece of advice is that I've ever gotten is, you know, just keep your head down and work. And uh, no matter the circumstances, no matter what situation you're in, just make sure you're working uh, and keep, keep moving forward, keep improving. How has it played out on the field? Uh, you know, I give all the credit that I have right now to my Lord. He's done a, he's done a great job. Uh, you know, he's he's such a huge part of my life, and it's uh, you know it's it's a blessing just to be able to use this as a pedestal to you know give thanks to him. Uh, routine for me is you know I try to stay as calm as possible pregame. That's kind of what I do. Uh, I don't really do anything specific, you know, just kind of relax as much as possible, listen to music, things like that, and stay calm. Yeah, you know, I think uh, the mindset of the guys, is, is, it's just been, you know, come in, work, and improve. Uh, we knew we weren't where we needed to be uh, after that game, and we knew where we could be if we worked the right way. And uh, I feel like the guys have done that, and it's, it's paid off, and we're playing some really good ball right now. player he's going to continue to be a hell of a player for a long time yeah I mean I've played with the two best quarterbacks to ever play this game um, especially when it comes to you know arm talent wise you know obviously Brady has all the statistics um, but I think Pat's getting pretty close to you know breaking some of breaking some of those um, but when it comes to arm talent man between Aaron and Pat you know, they're, they're equal. And so having those two guys, you know, be my quarterback for my career has been, you know, nothing but life changing. Um, and I'm, I'm grateful for, for both those guys. I'm, I got great friendships with both those guys. Um, and I hope that, you know, I can finish my career here with Pat and, you know, watch Aaron finish his career over in New York and, you know, it'd be good. I mean, he's been the same guy. Um, you know, he's never let his 
his outside stuff affect you know his his play um he it's not like he just became a celebrity you know yesterday uh he's been the best tight end in the history of football for years um and so you know he has a personal relationship that he has outside of a football and that's normal and just like everybody else and so he's just living his life yeah that's the that's always going to be you know priority number one um football is never going to define me uh, i take my faith very very seriously um, there's nothing more important than my faith and you know what god has done for me and so you know i won't ever let you know a football play or a, a number define me because i know where my my heart's at and i know you know who i play for no nah, i mean i still play the game uh, very very competitively um don't get me wrong i, I want to win every single play and i want to win every single game um but football won't ever define me you know because like i said guys the only person that can judge me so Yeah, I mean, he's a, a hell of a player um, to be, you know, the last pick of the draft, to be playing for a Super Bowl and, you know, up for MVP talks. You know, obviously he's he's a super talented, gifted guy, um, has a great team around him. Um, and I'm excited to see what he can do against our defense because we got a really good defense. And uh, I think it'll be his toughest challenge uh, to date with our defense this year. Um, yeah, I mean, some of the wideouts will get into arguments about who's the fastest. Uh, so we'll go and you know ask our, our data guys who ran the fastest today or who reached the top speed throughout the year. Um, so that stuff is that we kind of use just for fun um, or for bragging rights, but that's kind of pretty much it. Nah, nah, we don't play this game to hold anything back. I mean, it was great to help my team, you know, get to uh, a victory, um, but it wasn't, you know, I don't, it wasn't for me. You know, I wasn't like, uh, oh yeah, this is a weight off my shoulders or anything like that. Um, I was just help, you know, great to help this team win the game. What? Oh yeah, I mean, obviously we, we played here last year. Um, before I got here, we had, uh, or they had a bunch of, uh, experience with a couple other Super Bowl experiences. So, you know, just having that experience is going to be great. Just learning how to deal with the, the long TV timeouts and the long halftime breaks and things like that um, is, is going to be helpful, you know, just to pass down to the younger guys of you know, how to keep your body ready for a, you know, a four hour football game. Yeah, I mean, it's a familiar uh, place that we've had to play at a couple times. Uh, I think they call it Arrowhead West or something like that. Um, so, you know, just being able to go in and uh, play in a familiar place is going to be good. Um, why not, Jesus? You know, um, I know what he's done for my life. I know how he saved my life, how he's impacted my life, and how he's, you know, helped me and everyone around me and put me in this position to go in and, and be successful. So, you know, I... I couldn't tell you why not. Um, that's, a little, uh, that's, that's pretty personal, so I'll, I'll leave that one for another conversation. There's a amount of rings he was able to collect at each, each job. I mean, Patrick can't help me achieve anything other than, like, accolades, right? So if Patrick have 3,000 yards, they're not going to be like, okay, Chris Jones said the quarterback eight times. He should win DPO year, DPO wide because Patrick throw three times. That, it doesn't translate. No, but in, 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 a, in a broad view of things, as Patrick being successful, our offense is being successful, gives me more opportunities to rush the passer. Chris, can you talk about the 
I have no comment about it, man. <laughs> Absolutely, man. That came with Sony and Cole. Um, some players got frostbite. Some coaches got frostbite. So um, that game was very challenging, man. Um, so cold. Extremely cold. I don't know what they could handle it. I know at one point I could handle it. So it was like, yeah, it was cold. Chris, what are the Um, more weapons, you know, Christian McCaffrey. You got Debo is playing at a high level. You got uh, one of the best tight ends in the league. I mean, they got more weapons. They got Brock Purdy. They had Jimmy Guapolo. So I think they're a completely different team now. As Super Bowl champions. I don't care about the stats. I don't care about, oh, we the, one of the best defense. I don't care. Super Bowl champions. Um, just more grittier, man. More grittier, uh, more hungrier. Uh, we got a lot of young guys, so it's, um, it's a difference. It's a lot faster. A lot faster. We're done. Listen, guys, love you, man. Oh. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely.